generally we trust our vendors. Should we trust their websites? Hello, and welcome to Waterfalls Industrial Security Institute. I'm Andrew Ginter with Waterfall Security Solutions, and in this series of videos, we are working our way through the top 20 cyber attacks on industrial control systems. In this series, we use the top 20 attacks to compare the strength of security postures for two different security programs at a hypothetical target, a water treatment plant. The two programs are a 2013 vintage software-based security program with all of the best practices in place that 2013 style best practice recommended. And the second posture is that same software-based posture with a single change, which is a hardware-based unidirectional security gateway device, one device deployed instead of the ITOT firewall. At the ITOT interface, the only connection between the industrial network and the IT network is this unidirectional security gateway. Today's attack scenario, number 14, is a compromised vendor's website. I mean, generally we trust our vendors. This is why we buy their software. This is why we, we install it on our industrial networks. Generally we trust our vendors. Should we trust their websites. In this attack scenario, we have a hacktivist group that for some reason has a bee in their bonnet about our water treatment plant. And they've done their homework and they found the kinds of products that either the vendors have announced our water treatment plant is using, or they have done some social engineering and uh, sent phishing emails and interacted with employees at the plant to, again, find out what kind of software packages they're using. And they found a couple of comparatively small vendors whose software is installed at the plant. They check out these vendors' websites, and sure enough, one of the vendors has a poorly defended website. They use uh, known vulnerabilities to hack into the poorly defended vendor's website, and they look around, and what do they find? They find the security updates, because the vendor has to issue security updates from time to time. They unpack the most recent security update. They look at it and they get an understanding of the software. Now these people, you know, they don't have a lot of energy to devote to this attack. They're hacktivists. They don't make a living off of hacking things. They're, they're in a sense, they're amateurs. So they look at it and they get an idea of what registry entries the software looks at. How does the software determine which site it's at? Where's the name of the industrial site stored in the software? And they insert a tiny script into the software and repackage the security update and post it again on the compromised website. Now, industrial sites all over the world who are customers of this vendor download the security update and install it on their systems. The script activates on each one of these systems after it's installed and it looks around and says, what's the name of the site? And does nothing anywhere else except our site. When they see the name of the water treatment plant in, in, in our scenario, our, our water treatment plant, as the site that the, the software is installed at, the script activates. The script installs another tiny script to run a month down the road. It puts a, a batch job in to execute on a timer. The timer is quite a bit down the road. And what's it do a month down the road? It erases as much of the hard drive as it, you know, the, the, the software has permission to erase, which is generally enough to trigger a plant-wide shutdown because you've erased large parts of uh, you know, all of the equipment that this software is installed on. It might be five machines, it might be 50 machines, but you've got a problem now. And I'm always asked, is this attack scenario based on a, a real attack that's been observed out in the world? The answer is yes. This scenario is loosely based on the Havex slash Dragonfly, depending on you know which name, depending on which uh, security vendor you're looking at. It's loosely based on the Havex attack back in 2014, 2015. The degree of sophistication we're seeing here is modest. You know, these people are technical enough to you know do some spear phishing to you know, gather information about the vendors, to break into the vendor website using downloaded attack tools, exploiting known vulnerabilities, to pick apart the software to figure out where the name of the, the enterprise is, and to pack it all back together again. So they've got a degree of, of sophistication. They've invested you know, a couple of person weeks in this effort over the space of six months, and their reward is to see the plant go down. Uh, so modest, uh, 
cyber sophistication. No real engineering sophistication is needed. We're erasing the hard drive. That, that takes no engineering sophistication. They don't have to understand how the water treatment plant works. In terms of consequences, we're going to see the control system shut down. What are the consequences there? Well, how long does it take to come back up? Can we restore these machines from backups? All the usual questions we ask about ransomware. Um, we're certainly going to spend some time and effort fixing this problem and madly scanning systems to see um, is there any other evidence of compromise anywhere else in the system. You know, in the worst case, we're going to have to issue a boil water advisory. In the worst case, we've damaged some piece of equipment with this emergency shutdown, and it's going to take us weeks to repair the wretched thing and, and quite a bit of money to replace or repair the damaged equipment. How do our two security postures stand up against this class of adversary, against this class of attack? Well, in the software-based security posture, um, nobody takes security updates from the vendor and just slaps them in without testing and says, here we go. Nobody does that. There's always a test bed. There's always some degree of testing of these security updates um, before they're deployed. How long are they tested? Well, it depends. If they're, to test, if they're tested um, less than the one month it takes to trigger the, the erasure, well then, they're going to be deployed and we're going to have the problem. If they're tested more than a month, the test bed's going to be, have, have the hard drive erased and you know, no one's going to deploy anything until they figure out what went on there. So sometimes the 2013 posture is going to detect this class of attack and sometimes it's not. It might, it might not. That does not mean reliable, that means unreliable. The 2013 vintage system does not reliably defeat this class of attack. The unidirectionally protected network, the only difference between that network and the classic software-based network is the unidirectional gateway. Well, the unidirectional gateway means that software updates generally come in on USB drives or write once CD, CD drives. Um, into a test bed and they're tested again for less than a month or more than a month. If they're tested for less than a month and they say, well, it seems good and they put it on the industrial network, we have the problem. So again, does not reliably defeat this class of attack. Neither security posture reliably defeats this class of attack. So let's update our scorecard. The Attacks above the line are not reliably defeated. This attack goes above the line for both security postures. The attacks below the cyber design basis threat line are reliably defeated by the security posture. As you can see, there is a significant difference between these two security postures with only one change. We're using the top 20 attacks to compare the strength of these postures and we can see visually what's going on here. That's what I had for you in this episode. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget to download the, the top 20 white paper if you haven't yet. There's a link below the video. Thank you for watching all the way to the end of the episode. Do us a favor, give us a like and subscribe to the series. And join us next time for the top 20 cyber attacks on industrial control systems on Waterfalls Industrial Security Institute. <laughs>